Welcome back to Bay Area Focus. Joining us now is Judy Konofsky, Executive Director of Klez California. Thanks for coming on the show. So we know Klez California, it celebrates Yiddish culture in yes. the Bay Area. Explain what Yiddish culture is. Okay, Yiddish culture is the language, arts, and customs of a thousand years of Jewish community life starting in Eastern Europe. It flourishes now in the U.S., Canada, Argentina, uh, South Africa, and in Israel. Think about Seinfeld, think about Broadway, think about bagels. American Jewish life is based on Yiddish culture. Oh, that's great. And so Klez California kind of brings it all together. Tell me how this organization got started and... Well, Klezmer music started a resurgence worldwide about 40 years ago, beginning in the Bay Area. And klezmer music has been very popular since then among musicians, both Jewish and non-Jewish, both in the U.S. and in Europe. And in the Bay Area, we realized that people wanted to do Yiddish culture. They didn't want to just watch it. So we started 13 years ago to give Bay Area residents a way to participate in Yiddish culture, singing, dancing, learning some Yiddish phrases, watching some performances. It's great fun. It sounds like a lot of fun. So, okay, you talked about klezmer music. Yes. Explain it. I mean, we're not going to hear it, but just oh, okay. explain. Yeah. Uh, klezmer music Unless is... Unless you want to sing. <laughs> <laughs> you picked the wrong person to interview if you wanted a singer. Uh, klezmer music is instrumental music that started in Eastern Europe. Some of the melodies are from Jewish religious prayers, and some of them are, me are melodies borrowed or taken over from the cultures in which we lived in Turkey, Greece, Poland, Russia, Ukraine, Romania, uh, Greece. And that's why klezmer music sounds kind of Balkan and it sounds kind of Slavic. And people find it's very joyous music. People want to dance mm -hmm. and they do dance. And what they say about klezmer music is that when you hear it, it makes you feel happier and younger. Oh goodness, then let's play it. Uh, so what are some of the upcoming events? Uh, on Sunday, November 20th, we're having a cabaret by the bay in San Rafael at the Ocean Marin JCC, and it's featuring some of the Bay Area's best-known entertainers in a, a kind of a 1930s cabaret format, but still family-friendly. And then a few weeks after that, on Sunday, November 4th, we're having a full festival with nine workshops and a completely different cabaret by the bay in Berkeley at the Jewish Community Center of the East Bay. Well, a big festival. Okay, and you've had these events in Berkeley before. You've had the festival in Berkeley, but Marin, that's something new, right? Well, this is our 14th festival. We've had them in San Francisco, Palo Alto, West Marin, uh, Santa Rosa, and quite a number of them in the East Bay. And so this is our 14th in the East Bay, and everyone's welcome. There's a special program for kids and families in San Rafael, it's just the cabaret by the bay, but in the East Bay, there's the workshops plus the cabaret. Okay, so a lot going on. Tell me about some of these workshops. Well, there's if you're an instrumentalist and you can play your instrument, bring it along. If you can sing, there are two workshops for singers. I mentioned one for kids. There's a lecture on American Jewish radicals, the lesser known stories. There's a lecture called... Um, Ladies Lib, which is a history of old-fashioned songs sung by Jewish women at the end of the 19th century and early 20th century that, call about, that talk about the struggle for rights as workers and rights in the family issues that are obviously still current. And there's one class that's on uh, Yiddish curses. And the serious Yiddishists in the organization say, oh, no, not teaching Yiddish curses again. But they're really funny, and people like to learn them and like to say them. So you can learn witticisms and, and all kinds of Jewish phrases. I would like to learn a Yiddish curse. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Describe the resurgence of interest in Yiddish culture, not just here in the Bay Area, but across the country. Well, it started about 40 years ago. It's, it's fun. And... You never know why something takes off, but part of it is that it offers people of all ages a way to engage in Jewish life without the hot-button issues. And I won't mention what those hot-button issues are, but there's a way. It's multi-generational. At our events, we have five-year-olds dancing with 85-year-olds. 
It doesn't require that you speak any Yiddish. Our events don't require that you play any music, just that you want to have fun. And I know I go to Greek festivals in the Bay Area, and I go to Italian festivals, so whether you're Jewish or not, come to our Yiddish Culture Festival. Yeah, people from all different backgrounds, right? You brought a couple books with you. I did. This is Dr. Seuss, One Fish, Two it. Fish, oh, yeah, there we go. Red okay. Fish, Blue Fish. And just like books in Hebrew, it opens from right to left. It's great. And people always laugh when they see this because it's such a familiar cover. It is. And I don't Curious know if George this well. is Curious George in Yiddish. And of course, it's got... I mean, it only works if you have a Yiddish-speaking child, but even for adults, it's kind of fun to see that our American classics are now in Yiddish also. Yes, that is great. Well, Judy, thanks so much for coming on the show and telling us about Yiddish culture and also Class California. Thank My you. My pleasure. And for more information on the Yiddish Culture Festival, sounds like a lot of fun, just log on to kleskalifornia.org. Again, that's kleskalifornia.org. Coming up, an author talking about the meaning of dreams. We'll be right back. <laughs>